Yo, what's going on guys? Chris Bond here, Overtime Athletes. So for today's video, what I'd like to create for you guys is an example or a sample workout what I would create or run a sprinter through and kind of go behind the scenes of why I'm plugging it in or programming what I'm programming. Uh, if you're a 100 meter, 200 meter, if you're just somebody overall looking to get faster, this would be the methodology that I would utilize. So just like anything else, um, first and foremost, we're gonna start with a dynamic warmup. We're gonna raise the body's internal temperature, raise the tissue temperature, be able to start releasing that synovial fluid, get the athlete pretty loose. The next one that I would go into, which would also uh, fall under the warm-up series, would be the dorsiflexion series. This is something that I actually recently learned from Pete Bomarito with Bomarito Performance Systems, went to his workshop. Amazing, I think he's one of the best in the biz. Make sure you guys look him up, check him out. He's got some amazing stuff. And essentially what this series revolves around is being able to put the body in a position where we're keeping dorsiflexion and we're creating eccentric forces in that dorsiflexion uh, so we can increase the threshold to then transfer over to somebody performing speed. I think this is an amazing warm up, really working on what he calls the support system, which is the lower limb across that, across that foot and across, you know, uh, all the way from the knee down, basically. Next, um, I would apply some kind of mechanics. Now, if I'm taking a baseball player, football player, obviously I'm gonna work a little bit more mechanics, really just to make sure that they're more efficient, right? I don't want them to be less efficient in their actual movements. Since they're already a sprinter, unless there's some glaring thing, then I might address some kind of mechanical issue. But for the most part, you gotta realize, if you're a sprinter, most of your mechanical work is gonna be done on the actual track, remember, I'm just trying to raise your physicality. I'm not trying to beat you in the ground and run you. In fact, I'd probably never run you. I'll probably most likely do series of drills that are gonna support you. So one that they can continue to do that come in the form of more of a, um, you know, creating a more or increasing the threshold of that athlete to then go ahead and sprint faster would be an A skip series where we're doing some bounding in it and then a single leg cycling where we're really focusing on turning that leg over, more of a top speed type drill. Next, we'll get into some plyometrics. Single leg bounds, really what I'm looking for is being able to pull with that glute. So that even though this is straight leg, I'm focusing on really trying to pull with that glute, turning it on. Next will be alternating bounds. It's basically in a horizontal plane. Um, really focusing on single leg, being able to absorb force and produce force out of both legs. Finally would be single leg cycling where we're on that, that one leg and we're turning over as fast as we can. It's very aggressive on that single leg, very good plyometric drill for sprinters. Next we'll get into our strength. I'm gonna do accommodating resistance, another one. Again, I've used these before, but one that I um, recently learned from Pete when he was talking about high, fast, eccentric forces. I would do that with the band squat. I wouldn't necessarily go extremely heavy for this example of the workout. I might for some athletes, but for this particular one, it's more gonna be about the tempo. Then for my split, as far as auxiliaries, I absolutely love like a reverse lunge or an elevated reverse lunge. I think it's an excellent drill for guys trying to get that power out of that leg, especially sprinters in the acceleration phase. The next will be a single leg RDL putting that leg on stretch, really getting the most out of that glute and hamstring. And then finally for core, I would work the anterior oblique system, which is gonna be your internal external oblique, the opposite hip, the opposing hip. So what that's gonna do is allow that athlete as they're projecting themselves down the field court or track, I'm sorry, actually the track, to be able to stabilize in the torso and not fatigue so that they're twisting here. That's the workout for today for you sprinters. I hope you guys enjoy, check it out. Yo, what's going on fellas? Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in getting faster as an athlete, go ahead and click my advanced series right here where I provide you with free lessons to make you become faster. I'll see you inside.